morning. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about the simulation examples which are useful to find the applications of the helper transform. So here we have several applications of helper transform. The most important things is IQ channel, IQ channel processing. Okay, IQ channel processing in communication systems. Second one is single side band modulation. Okay, this is one kind of. Okay, so this is one kind of uh, uh, amplitude modulation system. So in this one, in IQ processing, uh, we generate the orthogonal signals using helper transform and we process the two channels separately and again at the end, uh, we add the results there. Okay. So in this way, because we have the two parallel channels in the receiver and in the transmitter also, the gain will be 3 dB, the receiver gain or transmitter gain it will be 3 dB. That means we, we have a uh, better better uh, quality. Okay, that means because signal is increasing means uh, naturally signal to noise ratio will increase. So it can compete with more noise. So that is what is in the communication receivers or radar receivers anywhere. We can go for IQ channels and uh, these are quadrature uh, processing it is called. Then in the second application I have the single side band modulation. So here this is uh, single side band modulation is used uh, to save the power when we use the amplitude modulation. We don't transmit any carrier here. The carrier contains no information. So naturally uh, we are transmitting only the side band which is the which contains the message information only. So to generate the SSB, we have to, we need helper transform, that means orthogonal channels. Okay, so that is what, uh, these are the two applications. And so in these two applications, in these two applications, we come across band pass signal. Okay, these are not the, because after modulation, here also modulation and here also modulation. So here we, we will talk about the band pass signal and it is not the low pass signal because these are all modulated to higher frequencies. We have a band pass signal. Okay. So let us uh, just uh, rewind uh, the analytical signal. There is nothing but pre envelope. So I am given a signal of XFT and I am finding the helper transform of that one. That means all the frequencies contained in XFT are uh, modified or shifted by 90 degrees. So that is what is helper transform, X cap. So you should be very careful uh, uh, how I am using this uh, notation. Okay, cap is used for helper transform and I am adding original signal XFT plus two helper transform of the same signal in orthogonal way, oh, that means J. Okay, so I am forming a complex function here, that complex function I am calling as x plus t. So this is nothing but the pre-envelope of the real signal. This is called the pre-envelope of the uh, given signal. Real signal Real signal means given signal is a real signal. Now if I take the pre-envelope and find the real part, so that is nothing but this is the real part. So it is nothing but the signal, original signal. Then if I take the imaginary part, I will get the helper transform. Okay. So, I mean, these are reverse relations. Now, in terms of spectra, as I 
already explained to you here uh, x plus of f capital x plus of f this is nothing but fourier transform of the pre envelope here okay so this is the fourier transform of the pre envelope that is given by that exists only for the positive frequencies and of course at f equal to 0 also so here this pre envelope has values okay so what is the original spectrum here capital x okay so this is uh, capital x of f is nothing but fourier transform of the original signal real signal x of t small x of t then you multiply this by 2 then this becomes the spectrum of the pre envelope signal so spectrum of the pre envelope uh, pre envelope signal is twice the spectrum of the original signal okay that to only for the positive frequencies for the negative frequencies it won't exist so, okay so it is matching basically because pre uh, pre envelope is a complex quantity uh, we have the uh, we have only the uh, one sided frequency one sided spectrum we will get and if it is a real signal fourier transform gives on the both sides okay here basically why it is happening is these are summing up in the time domain the spectra also will sum up in the frequency domain okay so bigger linear relation then what happens is this negative side frequencies spectrum of on the negative side frequencies will get cancelled when you add these two then i am left over with positive side double that because they are enhancing okay so positive side of this spectrum and positive of the spectrum of this both add up and negative side they will get cancelled that is the reason you get only the uh, one side okay so with this knowledge let us uh, discuss about a band pass uh, signal of course this is le let me put this just uh, uh, it will be useful later so this is nothing but impulse response of the hilbert transform and impulse response what is impulse response of the hilbert transform this this h of t equal to 1 by pi t okay so this let me erase this write it neatly okay so this is okay h of t equal to 1 by pi of t now h of t is impulse response of the hilbert transform filter right? let us say filter or system so this is inversely proportional to time when time equal to 0 at t equal to 0 this becomes this is the time axis correct this is the time axis when t equal to 0 this becomes infinite so this is uh, i mean uh, actually we define this with uh, uh, we can uh, i mean you, it is not defined basically okay at 0 it is not defined at 0 minus at 0 minus slightly less than 0 it is defined 0 plus slightly more than 0 it is defined but at 0 it is infinite so it it is not defined there okay so that is what because 1 by t is infinite t equal to 0 so this is what is impulse response of that one last time we have studied about the frequency response of this so this will be useful later uh, maybe in the future lectures uh, in my you know simulations and to demonstrate some of the examples okay so let us now uh, consider this a band pass signal what is band pass signal x of t is a band pass signal okay so that x of t is the gen in general here i am specifically considering x of t as a band pass signal and what is the band pass signal and it is again a narrow band signal not only band pass it is band pass and a narrow band signal so what it means is it's bandwidth is very much less compared to the center frequency of the signal okay dominant frequency of the signal so how it looks let us see this so i have something like this okay the center frequency is fc and this bandwidth this is 2w this is 2w because this side w and this side w 
2w. Okay. And this 2w is very much less than f0. F, sorry, here I, I have put f0. Okay. Uh, it's not fc, f0. So, this is the f0. Is the center frequency, dominant frequency or center frequency of the band of the given band pass signal. Okay. And bandwidth of the signal is 2w. And this bandwidth is very much compared to the center frequency, very much less compared to the uh, center frequency of the signal, okay, of the band. So then it is called a narrow band signal. Okay, otherwise, if it is, so let us say something like this, very wide like this, then I can say it is a band pass. Basically, this is nothing but band pass. What about this narrow one? That is narrow band. Okay, actually, this, this can also be called as white band, white band or band pass generally. Band pass means we are not specifying the bandwidth of the signal. It may be narrow band or it may be broad band. Okay. So, or white band. So, here I am considering only the narrow band. That means very narrow. The spectrum will appear like very narrow compared to the uh, center frequency. Okay. So, that is what is I am calling as band pass signal. Now, let us find the yeah. So, the pre-envelope pre of the band pass signal is given by, see what is this? X tilde is there. Okay, I will, I will explain later. The pre-envelope of this band pass signal X of T can be given like this. Okay, there are two components. One is the amplitude function of the exponential. Other one is the phase function. There are two. So, when I expand this, I have the cos and sine terms. Okay. Then, what is the x, x tilde? x tilde of t is the complex envelope. This is the low pass signal. So, low pass signal multiplied by. So, what it means is, this is a low pass signal, complex envelope. It is also a complex one, but it is a low pass signal. It contains low frequencies. So, here, uh, for example, let us take this. Let us take some signal like this. Okay. This is the envelope. This is the envelope of the signal. This envelope, this envelope is nothing but x tilde t. Okay. So the outer envelope, low pass, it is it, it contains only low, low frequencies. So that is x tilde and this X tilde is modulated with a high frequency carrier signal, high frequency signal. So that is nothing but e to the power of j omega naught t. So what is the center of that, uh, I mean actual spot frequency, it is a spot frequency. So in this case it is a spot frequency. We are considering, uh, I mean, yeah, we should always consider that only because it is a carrier frequency. Then you are multiplying with the low pass signal here. Okay. And that is nothing but the complex envelope of the signal. So, this is, uh, then when I multiply here, what I am getting? So, this is nothing but, this is nothing but pre-envelope. So, earlier we know the definitions. What are those definitions? So, here the actual signal is obtained by the, by taking the real part of pre-envelope and Hilbert transform is obtained by taking the imaginary part of the uh, pre-envelope. Okay. So, similarly, here X plus T, same notation, X plus T is the pre-envelope, real part of this one is nothing but original signal, imaginary part of one is nothing but Hilbert transform signal. So, this real part is nothing but, so what is our X plus? X plus is nothing but X tilde e to the power of j omega naught t. Okay. So, for this, I have to find the real part. So, if I want to find the real part, what I have to do? I have to expand like this. Okay. So, this is what? real part of this because I am considering only the real signal x of t and is nothing but real part of this. I have substituted for x of t pre-envelope and this x of t is a, as I told you, this x of t, the uh, complex envelope is also a, it is a low pass signal but it is also a complex quantity. So, that is why let us uh, express separately the imaginary and um, Okay. Imaginary, sorry, real and imaginary part series. Okay. So, this I, I have put not for the imaginary. I have put for the in-phase signal and this is for quadrature phase signal. Okay. So, this is what is the notation used in the communication receivers 
So that's why I used it here. This is the actual real path, but in phase component. And this is the imaginary path, quadrature component. Okay. So that's why I used Xi and XQ. And coming to e to the power of j omega, this is the e to the power of j omega. I have expanded this into uh, two trigonometric functions. Okay. One is real and other one is imaginary. Now, I want to get the real part of all this. Okay, I want to get the real part of this. So what I can do here, let me take the pointer, laser pointer. So here, xi real, cos omega naught t real, I can I will get real term here. And this two, if I multiply, I will get imaginary term. And this and this, first one, and this I will get imaginary term, j term. But when I multiply these two j terms, this and this, I will get j square, that is minus one. Okay. So there are two terms. Out of four multiplications, I have two terms which are correspond to real part, that is xi multiplied by cos omega naught t plus j square xq multiplied by sin omega naught t. So that is what is here. Because here j, j into j, j square, so we should have the we have the j square means minus 1. So let me correct this here. Here there is no j. Okay. So this j is not there. So minus 1 I, we got because of j square. So this is what is the real quantity. So this is equal to the original signal. What is this original signal? It is a high pass signal or I should say band pass signal, high frequency. And this xi is called in phase component. And XQ is called the uh, quadrature phase component. Okay. So what I am doing now, I have taken XI. So this is nothing but what is this? This is nothing but real part of complex envelope. Okay. So real part of envelope multiplied by cos of the carrier wave, that is cos of the high frequency signal. Okay. So that is one component minus imaginary part of the x tilde. This is one. This one multiplied by sine. So I am multiplying in phase. This, what is this? This is a low frequency component. This is low frequency. This is low frequency component. One low frequency component is multiplied by cos. Other low frequency component is multiplied by sine. So this other one is nothing but Hilbert transform. Okay. So, this is what uh, uh, I am by multiplying two orthogonal high, high spot frequencies, we are getting the band pass signal. That is nothing but X of T. So, band pass signal can be decomposed as a two terms, sum of two terms. Of course, you should take minus also into account, but sum, sum, okay, sum of two terms. In general, you can say sum of two terms. Uh, first term, Real part of the low pass signal multiplied by cos carrier, other one imaginary part multiplied by sine carrier and some of these two are minus of course. So I will get the original signal. This is the exp uh, expansion of the uh, band pass signal. <laughs> now, same signal. This is one form. Okay. So band pass signal expressed can be expressed in this manner. So let us call this as equation one. Okay, if you are if at all you are using it will be useful. Then same pre envelope we are representing in terms of R theta form, polar form. So what is the previous form? This was this was nothing but this was nothing but rectangular form. Correct? This was nothing but rectangular form. This was this is same here uh, rectangular form. This is rectangular form, this is also rectangular form. Okay, this is polar form. Okay, so now this time what I will do, I will keep this as it is. Okay, so this is what is same definition band pass signal. Band pass signal is nothing but real part of the pre envelope of the band pass signal. Okay, it is a pre envelope of the uh, band pass signal. Now, this x plus is nothing but x tilde e to the power of j omega naught t. Okay. Now, this j omega naught t I am not expanding into 
trigonometric terms, cos and sin. I am not expanding. I am keeping as it is. So what I am doing is this part, x tilde part, I am expressing in terms of r theta form. This is nothing but polar form. So this, what is this? This is the complex envelope. So this is the complex envelope is a complex quantity. Once it is a complex quantity, I can uh, represent this in terms of rectangular uh, coordinate system or polar uh, system also. Okay, polar coming to polar form. Sorry, polar form. Polar form. This is the amplitude function, magnitude function. This is the phase function. A of t e to the power of j phi of t. So this is phi of t is a time function of uh, this is phase. It is a time function which you give, which represents the magnitude. Okay, and this is there already. This is there already here. So now I can combine these two exponential terms. That is e to the power of j omega naught t plus phi t. Okay, this phi as t is adds to this f naught t. So it is a it is basically a phase uh, uh, because of the uh, frequency term. Okay, it is a, a ramp basically as the time increases. Frequency is constant here. Correct. Okay? But phase is frequency is constant. Phase is because if you integrate the frequency, you will get phase. Phase is linearly increasing. Okay, that is what is omega naught t. Then for that, you are adding the actual phase up, which is coming from the low pass signal. So this is the phase. You are adding these two, and then I have to take the real part of it. What is the real part of this? E of t. D here I have the cos. Cos omega naught t plus phi of t. Sine term is also there. Here there is also a sine term. Okay, there is a sine term here j sine term, but I am ignoring that term. Okay, because I want real part. I want real part here. Okay, so this is nothing but the real part. So we can express a band pass signal in two ways. One is in the rectangular form. Other one is in the Polar form. In the polar form, whatever a of t here we are using, that is nothing but envelope here, and phi of t is nothing but phase here. Okay. But in the same way, if you go back and if you see the uh, rectangular part, in this one uh, there is no uh, r theta, there is no uh, magnitude, and there is no phase here. It is in phase and quadrature phase. This is in phase component total thing. X i is the in phase component of the band pass signal multiplied by this, and this is quadrature phase component. Okay, so there is, there is no r theta here. Explicitly, it is not there. It is built in. So this is what you have. Now let us see some simulations. I have done some simulations. First, I have taken a signal. What is this signal? It is. A decaying exponential. It is a decaying exponential modulated with a high frequency sine wave, spot frequency. Okay, so this is inside. There is a sine wave. It is some. It is. Uh, you can say that you are modulating this one. And what is the spectrum of this one? The spectrum of this one is nothing but a narrow band filter. Very narrow band filter. Here there is no pedestal. It is not flat. Gain is not flat. In at, uh, at one point it is maximum. Afterwards it is just coming down. So it is a narrow band filter. Very na narrow band filter. Okay. So it is. An, I mean, uh, because it is not a filter, it is a signal. So basically, the dominant frequency contained in this one is 300 Hz. This is centered around 300 Hz, but you cannot separate the 300 Hz. Okay. Because the 300 Hz is not separately visible there. It is around 300 Hz, some bandwidth is there, small bandwidth is there. So basically, it is a continuous spectrum. It is a continuous spectrum. You cannot, you can never extract this 300 Hz separately. Okay. You may, you can extract maximum 301 to 303 or 301 to 300 and, uh, sorry, 299. So if you want to extract this, you may get, let us say, only 1 Hz, 299, 301. So, 299, 300, 301, all together you may get, but you will never get exactly 300. Okay. In fact, here not only this, all these things will come into picture, all these things will add up. So, when you, when you put uh, some band pass filter like this, if you want to extract this, 
you will get all frequencies in this range from here to here all frequencies but you will never get the single frequency that is 300 okay so that because it is a continuous spectrum now uh, now i want to find the analytical envelope what is analytical envelope here what is the for this i use i use that is nothing but pre envelope this is nothing but pre envelope this is x plus this is nothing but x plus of t and this is nothing but x of t plus j x cap of t Hilbert transform correct so now if i take the absolute value envelope it is called the envelope so when i take the envelope how i will get the envelope here the real part square plus imaginary part square and square root okay so that is what is the envelope you will get and that envelope if i plot so inside with red color i have preserved the signal and when i i am plotting when i get the analytical envelope and if i take the absolute value of this envelope what i mean is envelope means absolute envelope so uh, i mean uh, absolute envelope not of course not not absolute actually because i have the negative side and positive side also it, it can be anything okay it need not be absolute okay so that is what is uh, the analytical envelope you are you are getting this one now another example i have taken a signal see if you observe this signal see there is envelope here correct there is envelope here that is what is the pre envelope of this signal what is this signal this total signal is nothing but a band pass signal or i can say narrow band signal it is narrow band signal okay so inside there is high frequency component and outside there is envelope low frequency envelope high frequency uh, component inside is the within the envelope so here if you see there is another envelope here correct so there is an uh, so within this envelope the signal is oscillating the high frequency signal is oscillating now what is the spectrum of this one this is the spectrum of this one. what is the spectrum here uh, 1000 this is 2000 so it must be something like 1500 h okay so this is something like 1500 h but again it may not be a spot frequency okay yeah, it could be uh, frequency also because i have one lobe here and one lobe here okay so there are not delta functions because the data i have taken is smaller if i increase the data length this 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 main lobe also it will become very narrow and it will become a delta function here. otherwise it will become a sink sink main lobe okay so because i have taken the small data i, I got this okay anyway this is the center frequency the center frequency of this band pass signal is 15h and the bandwidth is you can say the bandwidth is very small because i cannot say on this uh, now for this signal i want to find the pre envelope that is x plus so for this also i have x plus t then so this is what we have then for this envelope whatever i have drawn there uh, when i find the analytical envelope or pre envelope i got this envelope which is put in the black color here and of course there are slight oscillations are there they are nothing but they are at the frequency they are equal to or half the frequency i believe because this is uh, repeating yeah it is cyclically repeating because cycles are there here okay because finite data you have taken and uh, i mean okay and due to sampling sampling is okay here okay it is not under sampled shape is okay so it is in the process itself so probably this contains uh, some high frequency uh, the envelope also contains some frequency very small component but the amplitude see this the carrier frequency whatever f naught frequency is there that is riding on this envelope that means actual envelope will be very smooth above that one 
maybe 30 db down or 100 uh, 30 db down or 20 db down very 100th of this value it is slightly but oscillating but it won't uh, uh, you can easily separate that one okay at later stage you can separate so but this is the envelope okay this is the envelope of the uh, signal now this signal range is if you see in the thing you have this this mean value is zero for this signal okay Yeah, for this band pass signal, but actually we, we have to see about the uh, see this is what is see when we take the envelope we, we don't take both sides one side either upper or lower upper one if I take uh, same thing as the lower one because I don't take this because afterwards what I will do is this is called envelope detector in the communication receiver I will take only the top envelope here then pass through low pass filter this ripple whatever high frequency ripple is there it will go away and I have a nice low pass signal here. Okay. And what is the amplitude of this low pass signal? So this is what is this is the peak, this is a negative peak, and this is a positive peak. This envelope, if I separate, I have uh, how much I have? Uh, maybe two volts, something like that. Maybe two volts like that. Okay. So I am talking about that one. Okay, so it contains the envelope contains DC, but band pass signal will never contain DC because it is positive and negative cycles oscillating because you are multiplying by e to the power of j omega naught t. Okay, so when you multiply, this will become a bipolar signal. The area under the positive cycles will cancel the negative cycles. Okay, and if any offsets are there, this kind of things, half cycles like that because of finite data. So that may reflect into small DC component, but otherwise, for all practical purposes, you can consider that as a band pass signal means zero mean signal basically, bipolar signal. Here, after subtracting the envelope, and one side, if we take that envelope, I mean, top one, or, I can say that it is a low pass envelope. This envelope contains DC. Okay. So, you can you can probably show that it may contain DC or may not contain DC, but in my simulations, I use small DC. Okay. So, that is two words I used there. Now, here, this is larger. This one is larger signal is, uh, I mean, peak to peak. It is large here and the, actually this is nothing but AM signal. It is nothing but amplitude modulation signal I simulated. Then this is also amplitude modulation signal but these peaks are less modulation index. So this is okay the depth of modulation is more here more depth of modulation is more okay there uh, it is they are just Riding and uh, this this corresponds to DC value. This corresponds inside whatever is there. If you, if you draw a line like this, okay. So this portion, whatever in between is there, that is corresponds to the uh, pure carrier signal. Okay. Then that carrier signal amplitude is more here. So in this case, so what is the thing? This to this uh, to add. And this to this area. That means only this portion. Okay, this portion, small one. So the envelope, envelope is envelope, and both these are almost same. So this is this. I have used one volt low pass. One volt I have used. I have converted that. Uh, uh, I mean one one volt means it, it, just one numerical value, digital one. Okay, digital one, and. Uh, that low pass for low pass I used one volt one one then that's why it, you are getting for this also if you see the spectrum you can clear this because depth is depth is more what is happening this bandwidth has increased this is carrier signal this is upper side band this is lower side band okay so this is upper side band other one is lower side band okay so there are upper side band lower side band now the width has Increase. This is nothing but 2W, where W is the base bandwidth of the baseband signal or message signal, 2W. Okay. So, compared to the previous one, see here, it is very less. Okay. This is very small. Of course, these are all 
actually some of these things will be artifacts actually when you because of finite data with all those things have come otherwise this width i should say that only this one this much bandwidth okay so here is more bandwidth because modulation depth has increased side bands upper side band is increased lower side band is reduced from the uh, main low main frequency center frequency okay now what i will do i will make total zero that means the okay here i am removing the carrier component i won't allow the carrier component i are now only the upper side band and lower side band so this is what is 1500 h in this 1500 h there is no carrier signal carrier is removed totally so that is the reason what is happening is you get this kind of thing okay i mean this is only manual drawing then when i do this okay basically it comes like this it will cut it here this envelope and this envelope will join there upper and lower envelopes both will join there like this. there is no gap like this okay so the gap will be there if you add some carrier component okay so here what i have done is i uh, used zero volts and zero volts means actually yeah zero relative amplitude of the message signal uh, because you have the amplitude modulation equation in that one you have that uh, uh, am plus am means message amplitude that i made it zero okay uh, sorry uh, i mean 1 plus a am multiplied by 1 plus m multiplied by cos earlier you have okay so that equation if you refer so i have created an am signal where there is no frequency call where there is no carrier component that is that is the meaning of this okay when i say zero so uh, and accordingly i have the upper side band here and lower side band here no carrier only upper side band lower side band now if i apply the hilbert transform and pre envelope if i find i will get very neatly this kind of thing but this pre envelope is not really giving the original real signal message signal okay so uh, we have to do some other processing okay i have to separate this this i have to separate this and uh, i have to go for as i told you it is a uh, double side band dsb double side band without carrier uh, and in this one there is another modulation called single side band so that also almost looks like this because you are cutting single side band means let us say you are cutting this lower side band you are only transferring the upper side band okay so in that case it is called the uh, single side band so to generate single side band we need hilbert transform and to demodulate single side band or double side band we need hilbert transform okay so that is what is uh, the receiver and transmitter but this is only signal part this is the theoretical part and simulation part of it and actual receiver will be uh, so many practical components there this is the how the uh, modulation or demodulation will work okay so it is only starting point but i am not explaining any modulation demodulation things here our main focus is hello demonstration of the hilbert transform okay so how hilbert envelope i mean how this analytical envelope or pre envelope will look like for different signals okay so here it won't serve purpose basically here it serves the purpose of demodulation if you separate this you separate this take only upper uh, envelope and pass through a low pass filter again you will get the message signal whatever you transmitted here you won't get that okay because it is distorted one so this is what uh, for today so thank you for your attention and the uh, next class i will simulate and show different signals real signals and i will find practically find the uh, hilbert transform i will display the each plot for the hilbert transform okay so we will discuss more about the hilbert transform of various signals in the next class thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates